What are the determining factors involved in choosing the classification of a clean room? There's a lot of things that, that, that translate into that, and the default is, for every industry, there's a default that you start with. As an example, in a medical device industry for packaging, you would default to an ISO class 7 or uh, class 10,000 clean room. But the, the, the issue that you've always got to deal with is, what do I really need for my, for my contamination levels? What size particle is, is my issue? And how much air do I have to circulate in order to move that air particle and get that particle out? The generation in a clean room, a clean room is designed to keep the outside environment from getting in. Now, once you've done that, and once you've created that environment and you've properly built that environment, the two things that cause contamination are the people and the process. So, what contamination is generated by the people and what contamination is generated by the process are what you have to deal with. Oftentimes, what you'll find is you can go with a less, a less clean clean room by garmenting your people to a higher level and understanding where your contamination is coming from and how you locate uh, return air grills, how you locate filtration can give you cleaner areas within a clean room but takes your overall clean room to a lower level. That will save you significant cost both from an upfront construction and from an operating standpoint. One of the reasons when they did the ISO standards is they created an environment called ISO class 9 which is, was never a clean room classification before. But it translates roughly into what the pharmaceutical industry calls a controlled unclassified area. And by controlled unclassified it means that it is controlled to a particle level, you have HEPA filtration in it, it's controlled to a temperature and humidity that you've specified, but it's unclassified by the nature of you're not saying what particle count it's going to be at. You're saying that it's pressurized, you're saying that it's controlled from a temperature standpoint, and you're saying that you're filtering the air. Well, in a lot of instances, that's all a client needs from a clean room standpoint, and they end up, in, if they're not careful, building a clean room that's far in excess of what they need, and there's dramatic cost involved in that.